I hope you are enjoying this house meeting as much as I am enjoying producing it, going back, watching how specifically the Lord worked for each person, so unique, so specific, and differently for each person. Now, I hope you're not just being entertained. I hope you are being equipped. That is my deepest prayer, is for you to feel the empowerment of the Holy Ghost to go minister to yourself on a daily basis and minister to those around you. All right, don't forget to click like, leave me a comment. Here we go. I already said that I know her. So I like, I don't have to like pretend like I got something like miraculous or supernatural. I can speak a blessing over my sister. There are things that I know for people. We know that God has designed us to prosper. We know that God gives us the victory. We know that God has blessed us to be fruitful. Most, come on, what do we know? If you don't know the word, then you don't know what to pray over people. You're just making up stuff to pray. So a lot of times I'll just start praying over people. And then like the spirit will just kind of like hone me in on something. And then I know, whoo, that's what the Lord wants to say to her. How you doing? <laughs> She's like, shh, too. Step forward for me just a minute. Father, I thank you for my sister. And I thank you, Father, for the faith that she has to go and grab her friends and to bring them. And there's a story in the Bible. See, there it is. There's a story in the Bible. There's a story in the Bible that says there was a man who was too crippled to come into the presence of God. And when they came in, it was, the house was packed. And so he just brought, he had, he, he brought his friend with him and he'd have four friends and you have all these friends that you've had got tonight. And I feel like the Lord is saying that he is using you to bring people into the kingdom. And a lot of people will try and define what an evangelistic anointing looks like or what an evangelist looks like. They'll try and say, this is what it looks like. But God says for you, this is what it looks like. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to lead them. Or you have to pray the sinner's prayer. You have, you can, but there's power in just bringing people with you. See, I mean, in John chapter 1, John chapter 2, all of the disciples came to see Jesus based on one man who originally saw him and then went and said, come and meet the man. Come and meet the man. Come. That everything you've experienced. You see, the Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. And in order for us to say that to people, we have to have been able to have tasted and seen it ourselves. And God says, you have tasted and you've seen. And it's just like when you go to a new restaurant and you taste a really good d dish and you're like, I want everybody to taste this dish. I want everybody to taste this. And you keep coming and you keep getting a taste, another understanding of who God is, another understanding of his attribute, another understanding of his nature. And then you go back to your friends, you're like, guys, you got to come taste this. God, you guys kind of come see this. You got to experience how who God is. And so, Father, I thank you for my sister, and I pray, Holy Spirit, even right now, for more courage, more divine connections. It's just the Spirit coming on you. You know how this goes. More divine connections, and not for you, but because of you, so that God can work through you and that he can use you to be that hook that calls more people into the kingdom because you have tasted and you have seen that God is good and you're taking portions of that kingdom and you're giving people around you bites of that and saying, come, experience the goodness of God. And here's the thing, people believe you because they see evidence of it in your life. They see that you've been delivered from depression. They see that you've been delivered from anxiety. They see that you've been delivered from fear. So you're not just talking but you're living the gospel. The Bible says that the word became flesh in Christ. And just as it became flesh in Christ, so also it becomes flesh in us. And so, Father, I thank you that the word is more than just a spoken something in her life, but it's being fleshed out. And touch her, Lord, now. 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 There it is. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm about to haul some demons out of this room. Huh? Do it? You can do it? <laughs> huh? I already did with that one. She's done. I'm like, no, stop. Get out. Be quiet. That's too much. It's too loud. It's too much. I was being patient, but now I've lost it. You good, Tammy? Tammy, I think you need to just take a seat for a little bit. Somebody get her some milk. Sober her up. Let's not touch her. 
All right, who's next? Look at all, all the Baptist kids are getting excited. They're like, stop calling us that. How you doing? Come, you all right? Can you open your hands just like this? Does, this is the spirit of the Lord already on you. So, Father, I just thank you, Lord, that you're bearing witness in a way that I never could. That her soul has had some questions, but tonight, I'm holding you up now. Tonight, there's been some answers that have been dropped into your soul. You've been asking the Lord several things, and tonight, you got answers almost faster than you remember asking them. And the Lord confirmed some things in your heart and in your soul. There's been some things that you've been curious about, even in the spirit. And I hear the Lord say, I want you to be curious. There's an invitation there to be more curious. And I hear the Holy Spirit say, don't worry, I'll course correct you if you get off. I'll course correct you. So I will navigate you. I will lead you into all truths. Even earlier when I talked about how it's the spirit of the Lord that leads a man into all truths. Go ahead. Go ahead. We're not going to hold her up anymore. And so we just declare that the spirit of the Lord is leading you into truth, is leading you into truth. Come on. There's a lot of word that you have in your life. A lot of word that you have in your life. Kim, you got someone right behind you. There's a lot of word that you have in your life. But the Spirit's going to come and be the topper on the Word. And things that you once read are going to come to life. You've often wondered and asked yourself in your head, what does it mean when it says the Word of God is alive and active? Like, what does it actually mean, God? And tonight, God is shifting words that have just been logos, meaning they've just been words, in your heart and your mind. They're turning into a rhema, means, which means the revealed Word, the, now, the alive Word of God. And so, God, I thank you that you are alive and you are active and that you are activating truths in her life, that they're coming to life for her right now in Jesus' name. And I almost hear you saying right now, oh, my gosh, is this really happening? (laughs) And there's no way I could have known that you were thinking that in your head except by the Spirit of God. And the Lord says, absolutely, this is really happening. And, yes, I am real. And if nobody else would have showed up tonight, I would have showed up for you. That's how much the Father loves you. In Jesus' name, thank you, Father. All right, we still have shaking. We have complete deliverance. How you doing? You were like a ricochet effect. (laughs) You all right? How about you? Are you okay? (laughs) This is not our first rodeo, just so you know. You notice how fast the entire team got their phone out to video you because we torment each other with funny, the bloopers of these house meetings. Yeah. It's going to be an exciting funeral one day because she'll live longer than me and she is an album full of Lisa bloopers. (laughs) I'm like, yeah, when I die, go ahead and show whatever you want. Are you still heavy? She's like, I'm so still heavy. She's talking like you, you're drunk in the spirit. Yeah? That's a good feeling, isn't it? Ain't no high like the high of the Holy Spirit. You remember that. Ain't no high like the high of the Holy Spirit. How you doing? Come on forward. I mean, you're pretty teeny tiny. I feel like we could Tetris you right here in this little spot right here. Stand, step forward just a little bit for me. I also know, you'll notice that she looks a little bit like the girl I already prayed over because they're twins. Double your trouble, double your fun, double your portion, double your anointing. (laughs) Oh, Father, I thank you for my sister. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that no matter how much she gets of you, she wants more. And I prayed over somebody a couple of weeks ago, and they literally struggled with a demon of gluttony. And I thought it's interesting how the demon can't make up his own personality. He's got to mimic the personality of the Holy Spirit because there is a righteous gluttony, gluttonous ability in us. And it's, it's in the spirit. Like there's a righteous gluttony. And God gives us this taste of him. And he says, I want it to be so satisfying and so good. And I want it to satisfy you but to a point where you want it more. And there's a permission there to be gluttonous in the spirit. See, sometimes people come to these house meetings and they're like, I'm going to let everybody else go. What's crazy is sometimes the anointing comes on me so strong and nobody's coming forward. So my team's like, bro, if they're not going to get it, we're going to get it. Look at They're like, well, I'm going to get it. Because, they, yeah, Brandy's like, mm-hmm, yeah, me too. And so we want other people to experience, but we also understand there's a more in the kingdom that God wants to invite us into. It's totally the different different than the natural world. In the natural world, even as a child, you were taught when you went into a candy store that you had to pick. 
one. But in the spirit, it's not like that. And remember tonight, we're not hanging out on the east side of the Jordan. We're hanging out on the west side of the Jordan where God is saying, you don't have to pick one. You can have them all. You can have them all. So I'm going to pray all the gifts of the spirit over you. See, sometimes I ask the Lord, is there one? Is there one that you would have her for her? And the Lord says, for her, I'm going to give them all to her. And with it, the wisdom to steward, the wisdom to know, the wisdom to say, this is a time for healing. This is a time for prophecy. This is a time for deliverance. This is a time for just love and compassion. This is a time to be quiet. And this is a time to speak. This is a time to serve. Come on. The wisdom See, carrying, embodying the fullness of Jesus with the fullness of all the gifts, not just one, but all of them. And so, God, I thank you that with it, you're loosing in her, God, the stewardship of the kingdom, the wisdom to know which one should I pick, when should I pick it, how should I, God, speak to me, because unless you speak, I'm not moving. God, show me, because unless you show me, I'm not moving. I'm not leaving, God. I'm not doing anything until you tell me. The intensity of the intimacy of the voice of God being loosed in your heart and in your mind, even right now in Jesus' name. I dial and tune your ears to the voice of the Holy Spirit. I open your eyes to see even angelic presence moving and roaming around you. Come on, that's a thing. That's a thing. No, that's a thing. And so I just I just affirm even the things that you have seen in the spirit, to the same degree that you saw demons. Come on, I don't even know if you saw demons, but the Lord told me to say that, yeah, she's like, oh, Lord, here it is. To the same degree, look it. (laughs) To the same degree that you saw demons, God says even more will you see angels. Get ready and be ready to fall face down because when you see them, your body is going to be overwhelmed by the magnitude and the majesty. You know this. By the second heavens, angelic presence. Hmm. And so we just open those eyes right now in the name of Jesus. There it is. There it is. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Has anybody seen angelic presence in the room tonight? Anybody? You did? Anybody else? Did you see anything? Yeah, you did. She's seeing angels right now. Look at her. She's like, oh, hallelujah. They're floating around. When I was standing over there earlier, I actually bumped into an angel on my right bottom cheek. I backed up. I thought you, I was had my eyes closed and I thought you had backed around. And I was like, what in the heck? Because I backed in and there was nothing there. But I backed into what felt like a human. My phone was not in my purse. I was looking at my phone. It was that, like that. I was like, ooh, I just bumped it. It felt like I went bum to bum with something very large. And it, I mean, it took me aback. I thought it was you. I thought you had walked around. And I was like, Kenneth ain't that big. And then I opened my eyes and I was, and I looked and I was like, oh, it was an angel. Why would I not assume it's an angel? You want to know why I wouldn't assume it? Because my intellect and stupid demons would tell me that's dumb. And the angels, but if you read your Bible, you would know it was super good. This poor woman's like, please stop talking. (laughs) <laughs> every time she's like, <laughs> read your bible <laughs> read your bible <laughs> thank you jesus thank you lord how are you doing are you happy <laughs> a lot of happiness in the room today i think god is fun oh yeah but i'm like bored with the rest of life <sighs> how are you doing <laughs> she's very happy oh, how are you doing she's like got drool coming out of her mouth what is your name I, I know I've met you before right okay I was like I don't know his name but God knows his name I'm messing with that I was almost afraid to ask what your name is like the Lord's going to be like Psh. who's next come on sister is this your baby? Who's this? Is this your baby? She comes with you. Okay, got you. Tell me your name. Zoe. Zoe, you are her daughter. So I just want you to close your eyes. I want you to pretend like nobody else is in this room. And it's just you and I. I'm going to kind of get really close to your ear, okay? That's just the spirit of the Lord coming on you already. 
catch that heaviness. Easy as that. Faith of a child. Why is it so easy for them? And we're like, it's not real. <laughs> Ooh. I like sometimes I'm in the spirit. I'm like, if you could just hit me with a deaf and dumb spirit for the sake of me, that would be great. So I was like, silence that. Thank you, Jesus. She goners. Good. Praise God. Praise God. She's gone. She's still gone. You're coming back. She's a little... How you doing? <laughs> this is the best part. It's like going to a party and you're the only sober person. Except I'm not really sober. I know I look sober, but my kneecaps are just going up and down so crazy. And I'm really kind of giddy in my head. How you doing? <laughs> She's like, don't touch me. You doing all right? Okay. Who's next? We got room. We'll make room. How are you doing? Good. Are you still heavy? Uh, kind of, but I just I feel warmth in my heart. You feel warmth in your stomach and in your heart. So we just declare that's the spirit of the Lord and the baptism of fire just being loosed in you in Jesus' name. See, that's how we move the Holy Spirit, right? Like we get to declare, like that's just, that's not a, that's not a natural phenomenon for your heart to be burning. So we just thank you, Father, that you're baptizing her with the spirit, the fire of the spirit in Jesus name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, you're not going to leave her, are you? Okay. I just want to make sure, you know, a good soldier never leaves a soldier behind. I also get very funny in the spirit. Like these guys are like, you are hilarious in the spirit. I am not funny at all in the natural. Now, my mom tells me I'm funny, but she's my mom. She has to think I'm funny. I'm really, I'm really, I think I'm funnier in the spirit. I think I'm funny in this. I jerk myself up. And... Oh, my God. Like, who needs to drink alcohol when you can just drink of the spirit, you know? Uh, I don't know if it's you or if it's me. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Go ahead and just take a step forward for me. Make sure I don't hit anybody's toes or anything. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I just thank you for my sister. I thank you, Father, that every word you've spoken to her has been true. And I remember, I remember the Lord saying that he was going to be your lover. He was going to be your husband. I remember that word. Now don't even have to ask, has it come true? Have you experienced? Because I know God is a God of his word. And I know it's true. It's... <laughs> thank you, Jesus. These guys are like a, a barrel of monkeys over here. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. We need this laughter, God. We need this healing, God. It's hard. Life's been hard. Life's been hard. And we thank you, Father, that laughter heals the bones. That a cheerful look is good medicine to the physical body. And so, Father, we just declare that even as laughter is being loosed, Father, healing is being released into our physical body. Yes. Energy and youth being restored, strength being restored, vigor, I don't know, I use that word, vigor is being restored in the spirit. The Bible talks about how he puts into us an energy, not just to do, but to want to do the will of God. And that word energy in the Greek is, is called energia, to do the works. It's the energy yes. of the kingdom. And there's a supernatural energy that's not of this world. <clears throat> and I really feel like the Lord is filling you with a supernatural energy oh, that you're not going to wear out. You're going to be staying up later. You're going to be staying up later because God has a post for you to stand upon. He's got a wall that he wants to position you on. Because you have said, God, I'll go into the west side of the Jordan. But it's not for naught that God's taking. He's got a wall over there, and it's got your name on it. And he's going to place you on it as a watchman in the spirit. As a watchman in the spirit. And so, Father, I thank you, Lord. I lose, God, the greater intel of the kingdom. A knowing in your knower. A, an a ability to speak into the things have, that have not yet come into an existence yes. and change them, Woo, shift them, <laughs> to interrupt the enemy's arrows, to inter, to is it intercept, to intercept the throes of the devil. Oh, God. <laughs> and so, Father, I thank you, God, that tonight, God, she's beginning to see herself. 
Not just in your closet, but on a wall. <laughs> on a wall. On a wall. Oh, Do you understand you can see farther when you're on a wall? Oh, yes. You can see all the way out across mm. a range when you're on the wall. And God puts people on a wall because he wants to reveal to them intel in the spirit. Mm. And so, Father, I thank you, Lord. And I release, God, I release, God, the fullness of your intercessory gift. Oh, Greater God. understanding of the spirit realm. Oh, you do it, God. Oh. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God. Yes, Lord. Oh, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just as he has said, just as he has said, let it be done. Let it be done. The giggles. Thank you, Father. How many of you feel like they don't really care what anybody else thinks about them in the room right now? How many of you wish you had that courage to just be like, I just wish I could be wrecked in front of people and not give a darn? You thought, I'm sure you've had your name prophesied over you a million times, haven't you? I won't pick that one. I'm just, I'm just kidding. I don't get to pick. I really don't. Father, I thank you for my sister Hannah, and I thank you, Father, for the newness that you're bringing into her life. It's almost like when I look out past your your right shoulder, it's my left. I see this dry and arid space and place, almost kind of a visual of you coming out of a time of a season of, of desert dryness, where it's just kind of not been a lot of fun in your life. And um, I almost feel like there's a spark of excitement, even in tonight, where you're like, oh, 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 there is more to the kingdom. There is more to God. God, you're not done. That's not it. That's not all I was ever going to experience. And even as you're coming out of this wilderness, I see the Lord bringing you into this newness and this freshness of a season. And there's two stories in the Bible. Well, there's lots of stories in the Bible, but there's two stories that I'm going to point out. One is of Moses when he comes to the Red Sea and he raises the, uh, he raises the staff and the waters part. And, uh, Joshua is standing there with him, right? So he sees all this. But then later on, Joshua is in charge, and he comes to the Jordan River. And, and God does it completely differently than he did it with Moses. See, if I'm Joshua, I'm going to be like, oh, yeah, I've seen this trick before. I'm going to raise the staff, and the water's going to part. But God was doing a new thing in Joshua. And sometimes we have a season of Moses and we have a season of Joshua, both in our own lives. Sometimes the Moses is a Moses season where God was working in a particular way. And then we come into this Joshua season and we try to do the things that we did in the Moses season, but it doesn't work. And you've been frustrated because you're doing all the things you did in the past, but it's not working the way that it did. But I'm hearing the Lord say, no, I'm bringing you into a newness of the spirit. And when they entered into the, the promised land, there's another story where it says that they, the Ark of the Covenant was going before them. And God was very intentional. And he said, don't get too close to it. Don't touch it. Don't get ahead of it because you have never been this way before. But if you keep your eye on my presence, I'll navigate you right to where I want you. And see, there's a greater intimacy in that. And God is developing a deeper intimacy in you and in your life by doing it in a new way. And he's saying, keep your ear pressed to my lips. Keep your eye on me. And I'm going to navigate you right into the perfect place. See, there's a place you've been trying to reach, a place you've been trying to go, a thing you've been trying to achieve. And doing it the way you used to do it isn't working. I'm going to keep saying that because I know it's a strong word for you. But I hear the Lord say, like, you've even blamed the devil and kind of said, well, the enemies attack me. And God's like, nah, nah, this is me because I have a new thing in mind. I have a new way in mind for you. I have a new plan for you. And if you trust me, I'm going to navigate you into it. And so, Father, I thank you for my sister. Yeah, we just released that. That's just the spirit of the Lord coming on you. Just confirming the word. Just confirm the Lord's word, spirit. He's just confirming the word. So we're just going to surrender to his presence. We're going to surrender to his holiness. We're going to surrender to his perfection because he's not going to lead you astray. He's going to lead you into the perfect bullseye for you, for your life, for such a time as this. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus.